Hello Sharks, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com and we have a treat for you today. You all told me you wanted micro stakes tournament content. So, poker coaching coach Alex Assassinato Fitzgerald moved all the way down to the $2 buy-in games to try to get some experience and to play in those games to get content for you. And you know what happened? He won a tournament! And I'm going to be sharing a little bit of his newest series at PokerCoaching.com called How to Beat the Micro Stakes with you today. It's an interactive learning experience. You're about to see it in just a second, so make sure you stick around for that. I'm actually having a sale at PokerCoaching.com right now for Father's Day, so if you want complete access to this entire brand new course where he goes through this $2 buy and tournament win, make sure you check it out at PokerCoaching.com slash fathers. There'll be a link below in the comment section. Hope you enjoy it. Hey everybody, this is Alexander Fitzgerald or Assassinato doing another one of my training videos. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be discussing how to beat micro stakes tournaments. So oftentimes people tell me, hey, the strategies you advocate, they don't work in my micro stakes games because people don't want to fold. And that's a very valid criticism. That's a very valid question is what do I do when people don't want to fold? So what I decided to do is I spent a couple of days playing. I, I'm in the United States, so I have to play on American sites. And it was limited where I could play. So I decided to play on America's Card Room because that's where I could play the most micro stakes tournaments. And I can't remember if, yeah, I think it was the second day I was playing micro stakes tournaments. I won one of them. And that was certainly good because now I can, you're not going to learn how to swim by reading a book. You're going to need to apply at some point. I, I'm going to ask you to take some time to look at some of these situations and ask yourself, why do you do the things you always do? And then I'm going to discuss how I would approach it. And hopefully we can uh, figure out what's best and move forward. So I'm going to do about 10, 15 seconds for each decision. If, if I think it's a no brainer, I might give just five seconds just so you can check yourself. If it's a really difficult decision, I'll be sure to give you 30 seconds to think through it. If you need more time, by all means, take more time if you're watching a recording of this pause. So let's go ahead and get into this. So this is the beginning of the tournament. This is the beginning of me playing a bunch of tournaments, trying to win one of these for you guys. Uh, the statistics are going to be very easy. I've added the abbreviations so you can remember what they are. VP is voluntarily played. Percentage of hands. PR is preflop raised. The percentage of hands that were raised preflop. Three bet is how many hands were three bet. And aggression frequency is how often the person is aggressive. Uh, the villain's names will be up here. The number of hands they play is up there. And yeah, you're going to be looking at exactly what I was looking at now. I was playing a number of tables to try to get this hand history. So if I do something that's a little bonkers or a little I don't love, I'll let you know so you don't replicate that. So here with the 5-6 offsuit, you're facing a raise and three calls. Would you like to fold call or raise here? Okay, time is up. I folded here, and the reason I folded is it's not, at first glance, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if you said call there, but I'm having a lot of difficulty proving that's a profitable call. I've tried to isolate in a number of databases, statistically, people calling out of the big line in multi-way pots there with like 5-6 offsuit and king-deuce offsuit in hands that people like to call there because they go, okay, the odds are great. And what I'm finding is, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying I can't prove it. And just my investing strategy and everything in life, if I can't prove it mathematically in some form, I, I'm not going to pursue it. The unsuited connectors, let's say like seven, eight offsuit, eight, nine offsuit, 10, nine offsuit, and things like that, th there is some evidence you can make that profitable. So if you called with that, that's fine. Five, six offsuit, I'm having a hard time proving profitability. I actually find a lot of people with extreme difficulty there with an ace. So a lot of times people will have like a seven offsuit there and they go, okay, this is a no brainer call because the pot odds are so great. I should be able to do so. And I'm not really finding a lot of evidence that people are making money there. 
So if they were making money, what it would look like in the database, if you isolate it for these, is it would be greater than 100 big, it, when you fold there, uh, you lose 100 big blinds per 100 hands. So for you to make money there by calling, it should be a number less than negative 100. So it should be like negative 86 or something. And you do see a lot of negative like 111, which means a lot of times people are flopping aces and they're not folding when they're clearly good, uh, not good. So that's an issue. So do be try, do try to be careful here and do try to figure out how you do in these multi-way pots uh, because it is, it can be a bit of a sink as far as profitability. Here you have ace-jack offsuit. You're right at the beginning of this tournament and you're looking at what I was looking at. I didn't know these players because typically I don't play these stakes. And when you play micro stakes, it's a lot of people playing casually. So you're going to get a lot of people that don't play all that often. You're not going to know much about them. You have ace-jack offsuit. One of these players is open from under the gun. What would you like to do? Fold, call, or raise? Okay, time is up. Here, we're going to fold. When somebody opens from early position and we're out of position, it's going to be very difficult to make that profitable. So generally... Unless you have some extenuating circumstance, unless you have some indicator that this person is just raising all the garbage, you you would then care to play. Now, if you said this is micro six, I believe he's raising ace two suited, ace two suited, uh, king jack, queen jack, all of those hands I want to play. I would generally recommend a three bet at that point, but I, I just don't think you're going to have that evidence at this point. So it might be better to pass. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video where Alex Fitzgerald walked you through a few of the hands from the $2 buy-in tournament that he recently won. If you want full access to that course, make sure you head over to pokercoaching.com fathers. There'll be a link below. Also, if you like this, if you like me, if you like the Assassin Auto, click the like and subscribe buttons below and also the notification bell. Good luck in your games and we'll talk to you next time. How would you like to have one of these championship bracelets from winning a major poker tournament? Well, here, I have plenty. I'll give you one of these. Oh. Couldn't quite get it to you. Instead, you're going to have to win your own. To get started, click the subscribe button.